welcome to the Bold Top by Joe podcast. Coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. All right, we're on. Hi, Natalie. Hello. It's been a while since... uh, I asked you to be in the show, and I was trying to moving moving some stuff around, trying to get some uh, trying to get some OKs. It didn't work, so I had to uh, let go of some sponsors, and that way I can be able to do different shows, right? Because they kind of pick and choose who they want you to have, which just makes no sense. But finally, you're here. here. So why don't you tell everybody who you are and uh, a little bit about yourself? All right. Well, my name is Natalie Warner, and I'm the author of Crazy on the Inside, a memoir of nobody special. And that's my book that chronicles my journey through opening my marriage and living a part-time single life for one week a month in New York City. Mm. And that was, I started that around nine years ago. I opened my marriage around nine years ago and started to have a single side and Mm -hmm. he has one as well, but we started to each have our own single side and mine took place in New York. Mm -hmm. While I was there partway through like a year in, I was like, dating sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Like dating sucks. Like I've always wanted to live in New York though. And I've always wanted to write New York. So then I was like, why don't I, uh, why don't I see what I can do here? Mm -hmm. So then I just changed it a bit and I started to like, go there and meet people as friends. And then I, you know, I wanted to write. So I joined a class in the East village and Mm -hmm. that's how I really started to run with it with like, I can have this open marriage and I can have this single side and with it, Mm -hmm. I can do what I want, which means I can fulfill old dreams. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. What, uh, so I read your book and I read it when a while back. Well, actually, I didn't read it. That's a lie. I heard it. I, I used the audiobook. Perfect. So it's just easier for me when I'm working and I can listen to the listen to the story. And it's interesting, you know, because I did see a um, one of your tweets and it said that that part of you was kind of back then that you changed a lot since you wrote the book. Right. How have you changed uh, from writing the book till now? What, what, what is the things that you've done a little different? Well, even in the beginning, like when I opened the marriage and that I wasn't somebody that was built on confidence. I know now what I did Mm -hmm. was like this huge leap of faith. But at the time I was just dying of monotony. I was just dying to have anything that looked like a life that resembled something I would want to have because suburbia was slowly killing me. Mm -hmm. So When I started to go, I didn't have a lot of confidence. I didn't know what I was really looking for. I just knew that I couldn't be done with life's experiences, Mm -hmm. that there had to be more. I couldn't have life just figured out. There had to be more, but I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know, but I knew that, you know, I liked being a mom and I liked being a wife and I liked being that, but I still needed more. Mm -hmm. And I felt a lot of guilt for that. But at some point in time, you have to, you come to this point or I came to this point where I was like, okay, either my life still matters and what I want still matters Mm -hmm. or I'm a support forever. And one I can deal with and I can like make my way through and the other feels too much like give up. It feels too much like I'm forced to do that. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't okay with that because living that way was not fulfilling to me. It was suffocating. Mm -hmm. So I had nothing to lose at this point. Mm -hmm. So I just branched out. And then when I did that, that's when I started to really collect my power and really discover who I am. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to New York, Mm -hmm. but nobody stops to talk to you and tell you how bad you're doing or what you should do differently or anything. They don't care. Just live your life. Don't trip anybody up and away you go. And that's where I really found my lane of like the power of minding your own business and just really living your own life and staying focused. Mm -hmm. And when I started to do that, I started to quiet the outside. Once Mm -hmm. I could do that, I can calm the inside. I could build my own. Mm -hmm. And I just started to be like, okay, 
Who do I want to be? Mm-hmm. And now that's how I'm going to live my life. I want to be truthful, open, and honest because I don't want to live in secrets. Why would I have to? Right. If I don't have to, I'm not going to. Right. And I just slowly carved out this part of my life that for myself. And in that, I used that time and space mm-hmm. to become the person I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So now when I look back, I go, oh, wow, like I... I can't believe I did that because it looks so freaking exhausting. Like who does that? Like every month, that's like eight to 12 hours, just one way on flights. And that's not even layovers. Hopefully your luggage lands, but yes. a lot of times it doesn't. Do you know how many times I've been like stranded in New York at $500 a pop? I'm sure. Just waiting for my plane to leave, but you're in LaGuardia. So mm-hmm. fingers crossed. Good luck. Like, Right. Mm -hmm. So I look at that now and I'm like, oh, gosh, like now I'm like, no, like, oh, I'll just drive. Can I drive there? I'll drive there. Like, I don't feel I feel that now I have so much for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't feel panicky and like clawing at the world going, I'm running out of time. I'm feeling left behind. I don't have any of that. Now I'm like, I feel this. I feel this like contentment that I've never had. And it's not a, I'm settled now. It's that I'm living my life now. And that feels really good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, yeah. Like the woman at the, the woman at the beginning of the book, Mm -hmm. man, like props to her because she got Mm -hmm. to where I am now. And I look back and I'm like, I need a nap. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even like airports anymore. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it's, it must be exhausting. Just, I mean, just taking a vacation is exhausting. Just flying to different places. It's hard. Do you feel, um, from going through all this stuff, do you feel that people look at you a little different? I know that it doesn't matter. I know that you, uh, you as a person, if you're trying to accomplish something in life, you shouldn't have to hear the noise from anybody, right? Because it's not healthy. But part of you, does if do you feel like people judge you for doing for doing this, for doing this change and going with going through all this? Yes, mm-hmm. of course. They do. But here's the thing is that that type of judgment started a long time ago. And I'll tell you how. You read my book mm-hmm. or listen to my book. Mm-hmm. I read you my book. So like In my first marriage, when I left, my son, our son stayed with his father and I went away to university because he would be in the only home he's ever known going to the only school. And, you know, it was a smaller place. All the supports were there where I was going away to university and he would be like in a daycare half the day. Mm -hmm. And people were like, I can't believe you left him behind. I was like, relax. I didn't abandon him in Mexico or Mm -hmm. somewhere on vacation. Mm -hmm. He's with his father. Like that person I chose to have a child with. Mm -hmm. It's because we had a big discussion around what parenting looks like. So when I wanted to go to university, we came to the table and I was like, I do want to take him. Of course I want to take him, but I take him and what he stays in a daycare and I see him a little bit. Mm -hmm. How fair is that? Right. Like, really? Like, what am I doing there? Like, for me, if I take him, I'm I'm doing that because that makes me feel good. I'm not working in his best interest, in stability, in what he knows. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that's uprooting my life. Until I'm settled, I have no business removing my child from his stability. So I've already been part of the, I can't believe you would do that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to my marriage now, the beginning, it was like, you know, super privacy because I could not withstand it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, cool. Like, all I'm saying is this. If you have time to stop and tell me how much you don't like my marriage and that, Mm -hmm. I'm inclined to believe you're probably not very happy in your life. Because people who are generally happy Mm -hmm. don't have time to tell me what they don't like about me. Right. There are, so there are the ones that come that, you know, have been burned by open marriage and relationships and they have that sour taste in their mouth. And I get that. I can totally understand that because people use it as like this fringe thing. Like it's a kink. And I'm like, no, I don't belong to some 
lifestyle or whatever. I'm just not monogamous. It's not like I opened my marriage so I can attend all these parties or whatever. I did it because I still have things to experience on my own. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to do those freely. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to do them with integrity. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily play by these rules that don't really need to exist. And the ones that do exist around marriage really only exist because of religion. Mm -hmm. And really, I can't tell you how much I don't really care about that. Right. That was, um, you know, part of the book where you are, I think it's like half, like in the middle of it, where you are going, you're staying in, I believe it's New York uh, with one person, but uh, your husband then tells you, um, are you, do you like him? You know, or right. I, I, it was something like that. I'm trying to remember all of it, but you, you, he tells you, do you like him? Do you want to be with him? Um, was that, was that hard just, um, hearing it from him and, um, you know, going through as you were going through your life and doing all these changes, was that hard for you to hear? And was, I mean, that was basically like a green light, right? Because I don't know exactly, you know, the book is a book, but in, in, in real life, when you're there, it's different. How did, how did you feel uh, about that in that moment when he's like, you know, it's okay if that's what you want? I think the part you're talking about is called the boyfriend. Effect. Yes. And it's funny. Yeah. Cause I have it actually circled for my channel because I'm bringing that part up. Mm -hmm. And it was just the realization that I, I'd become, you know, I'd become, I'd, I'd started dating this gentleman and I'd become so comfortable in it and just had been having so much fun. And coming back, I remember one time and he'd said, but you realize like, you live with him there. Yes. And that was like, cause it was like, Oh, Whoa, what? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Of course I don't. Of course I don't. Of course I fucking do. Mm -hmm. No, you're good. You can cuss. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Like, like I can say no, 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 no. But the reality is that I have a freaking closet there. He picks me up at Laborty mm -hmm. all the time and I know his kids and sometimes he knows mine. And it's like, yeah, I am. And I was like, how did this happen? Like what happened? But the reality was like, even as I was going about it, even as I was writing the book, I still wasn't removed enough to see what was going on. It was like, I was figuring it out as I was going and writing it about it. It's like, oh, okay, I'm open. So I'm non-monogamous. And then it was like, I met this really nice gentleman in Queens. And I was like, turns out I'm Polly. I don't want to share time with, you know, away from him. I only have a week. He's a great date. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Why wouldn't I? That's crazy not to, you know, I tried to not fall into that and to like give space mm -hmm. and to do all those things, but it didn't happen like mm -hmm. that. But once it was acknowledged, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, because there's just, when you live like this, when you live in honesty, you have this awareness and you can't unsee it. And it's, you, you don't want to unsee it. It's like, okay, because I don't want my home life to change. I love my life. I didn't open my marriage because it's broken. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, good point. Let me kind of like dial it mm -hmm. back a bit. Let me, you know, and also talk to the other gentleman of like, hey, I feel bad. Like I'm intruding on your life. Like I, it's just kind of natural now. It's been so long. But another thing I will say is that with that specific gentleman, we went through like I would say like it was bonkers, but in the, sh there was like six months of time where we went through what 20 years of relationship would go. It was wild. And it wasn't anything that we were doing together, but it was everything around us. And it was like, we were caught in the eye of this storm and we're just kind of standing there going, Oh my mm -hmm. good God. Like oh, what's going on? Like everything from like, friends committing suicide to my father dying. Like it was just this, and he was always with me. So it was just this ridiculous time. And there was no way that we weren't going to bond. There was no way that I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like I have very strong, I have, I have very strong feelings for him. I, 
absolutely fell in love with him. And I felt comfortable in that. I'm even, even after it was mentioned about, you know, you live with him, right? I was like, shit, let me adjust mm-hmm. that. But I can adjust that without adjusting my feelings. Yeah. You know? You. Yeah. Cause at the same time, I still want to make sure that everything works well. Like if my marriage hurts, everything else has to shut yes. down. That cannot be, that's not something that goes on the back burner. Mm-hmm. Does, um, you know, it, it's a, I believe it's a normal thing when you share time with somebody for a while and you have ups and downs and it's a, it's a natural process for us humans to, to bond to other people, especially if, there's emotional support and there's things happening around us and all this stuff. And a lot of people don't understand that um, you, if you have that emotional support and you're going through things and you will bond, you will bond with people. It doesn't matter if it's a, it's a man or a woman or whatever it is. You, you, you're still, there's still going to be this bond because you're sharing something that's part of your life that you just wouldn't share it with anybody else. You know, your struggles and, and, all the other problems from, you know, your father dying and all that stuff. So it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard for when, when you were going through all this, the family, so his side of the family, like his part now. So you're going through all this, you got all this stuff done. Here's, here's what it is. Was it any different going to like family gatherings or, I mean, you know, like with his side of the family or, like, hey, what the heck? You know, what are you doing? Was there like a struggle at the beginning? We're all, at, I, uh, we're all, he comes from a large Irish family. I come from a large Irish family. And it's kind mm-hmm. of like we're a blended mix of a large Irish family. So it's like mm-hmm. there's conflict, there's, you know, arguments, there's things like mm-hmm. that. But like, you know, I would, I would give any of those people like anything they needed. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, were all experiences amazing? No, of course they weren't. But mm-hmm. did I have amazing experiences with these people? Of course I did. Like mm-hmm. they were wonderful. I've known, I knew them for years. I was, you know, part of their home, things like that. Um, but yeah, it wasn't always easy. There was always growing pains and things like that. But him mm-hmm. and I were always like, I'm kind of writing the book on this literally mm-hmm. as I go. And we're all kind of going through this as we mm-hmm. go. And there's massive obstacles that just keep coming up when I'm like mm-hmm. either out of the country or in the air or like, mm-hmm. it's just, it was this weird year of storms that were just like unreal. And, mm-hmm. and at the same time, when you're going through that, I don't, I'm not thinking about, Oh, I don't want to, bond with this person because Mm -hmm. I'm well aware that I can have feelings for people and not act on them, Mm -hmm. you know? And when I'm in that situation and I feel really heavy inside and that I want to have that, I don't want to withhold that. I don't want to. And I also don't want to have expectations for other people to fulfill things. So it's like Mm -hmm. when I have those moments, I accept them. I enjoy them but they don't change my life like that. Does your, um, your husband at the time, well, your husband now, but at the time when this was going on, he wasn't, he was just, uh, how would you call it? He wasn't uh, dating anybody else or nothing. Right. It was just, uh, or was it always like that? Well, we just, we're different. So Dan and I are completely different in how we have our open lives. So I'm Mm -hmm. polyamorous. So I have another relationship even now. Mm -hmm. I have another relationship for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. I see somebody just in my province, mm-hmm. but Dan doesn't see people ongoing. Like he doesn't want, he doesn't necessarily want that relationship part. Now don't get me wrong. I'm sure if he found somebody that's like, Hey, let's go to festivals and music and yada, yada, yada. He would go no problem. That would be great. Mm-hmm. But he, he has a lot on the go. Like he has his band and things like that as well. And he travels a lot. So he doesn't necessarily want another relationship that he has to mm. pour into, but he absolutely dates, goes out, does all that. He has a single life and he's very open in it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he just went to Thailand for three weeks. 
where he oh, did cool. i'm sure he dated and everything yeah mm-hmm. are you afraid of of like losing him at one point or is it that's a, a choice that he would have to take or he would have to make if he gets to like well i don't you know i'm kind of like done with this like what you know i, I don't want to do this anymore are you afraid of him just kind of going his own way no because here's the thing like it doesn't mean we're going to make it to the end mm-hmm. it doesn't but not being monogamous doesn't I, i'm on my second marriage i'm going to tell you right now it doesn't mm-hmm. right it doesn't mean that the point of my partnership with my husband with dan is not we make it to the end the point is that when we're together that we have this commitment that you're happy in it if there comes a time you're not happy in it I would absolutely expect you to want out of it. And I would allow that. When we built this, we knew the risks. I am not here to hold anyone hostage, nor am I here to be angry if anybody wants to leave. This is spending your life with somebody, promising to spend your life with somebody is a huge risk. Being able to pull it off is monumental but I'm not willing to pull it off if the cost is just misery. I'm not willing to do that. He gave me this incredible space and time to become who I am. He does not ever deserve resistance if he wants out. Now, if he said to me, Natalie, I think we should close our marriage and talk about this for a bit. No problem. No problem at all. It doesn't change the fact that I'm not monogamous. And to be fair, neither is is he. Mm. It doesn't change that. We're still not monogamous. But if our marriage needs work, there's no business. It has no business bringing anyone else into it. Everybody gets shut out. doesn't mean the marriage is closed. It just means that right now we're concentrating on us. And when that's better, when that's good, then we'll see. But Mm. for him... For him to come along and say all of a sudden, Natalie, I'm I'm monogamous all of a sudden now and I want to close the marriage. No, no. Then we're definitely like, I want more information on that. That to me sounds like this is a non-negotiable. Right. You know what I mean? This to mm-hmm. me is a non When If he were to come to me and say that, to me, I'm being told now. Mm-hmm. It's either monogamous or it's out. So to me, I'm not even getting a choice and I'm not monogamous. So we're out. Mm-hmm. But- to me, a good marriage isn't 75 years necessarily. A good marriage produces happiness and maintains it where people can learn and grow and evolve together. You know, dragging it out at all costs does not make it a healthy, successful marriage. It just means you made it to the death pact. Big deal. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Nobody <laughs> cares. It's, it's actually tragic. Mm-hmm. It's like, I even, I was talking to, um, a girl on my Twitter about Mm -hmm. people who are in miserable marriage, sexless marriages, all those things. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, it's my bed. I'm just going to lie in it. Okay, cool. But like fluff the pillows, change the sheets, do something with it. Like if you, why just be so hell bent on being miserable in it and then dragging the other person with you. That's marriage. That's good. That you signed up for that. Good God. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Do you feel like a lot of women want to, well, a lot of them would pick to go this route and they just live unhappy, but they're just scared of the consequences or they're scared of what people are going to say to them or what how they're going to be judged. I have a ton of couples that I coach and con- have contact mm-hmm. with. A lot of couples are terrified to tell people they're open. Terrified. Um, but on both sides, oh, I feel like this. One partner typically would like to open when it becomes a sexless marriage that is void of intimacy as well. Now, a lot of times when there's intimacy but not but not sex, the other partner does they could they can coast quite well um, on with affection and things like that because mm-hmm. in those times a lot of times it's a um, it's a health concern. It's things like that. So they find a way. 
But then when it's just shut down, like no passion, no nothing, we are now glorified roommates. Mm -hmm. That's when the one partner's like, okay, so I don't want to go without sex. I don't want to go without intimacy. I feel depressed. I feel lonely. I feel like I don't matter. Like I'm just here to help out. Now I'm just a helping hand. So I need more. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that they're necessarily, and I'm not speaking for anyone in my, just in my conversations with them, I don't necessarily think that they are non-monogamous, but I don't, but I know definitely they don't want to be celibate. So it's like, where do I go here? Because I want my partner, whether it's that, whether it's their wife or their husband or whatever, I want my partner, but my partner no longer has interest for whatever reason. I don't want to divorce my partner. I don't know how to talk to my partner, but I need affection. I need intimacy. And I don't know where to get that from. Mm -hmm. That's so. very important. I mean, you have to have, you have to have that. And I mean, if you start, you know, if it starts lacking on that, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people, it seems like they, sex is one of the most important things. And if they kind of start lacking that a little bit, I feel like they, they want to stray. They want to just kind of like, ah, screw this. You know what I mean? And they don't actually try to re find like an actual solution do mm -hmm. you feel that it's sometimes it's just because they just want to have sex with different people or do you feel like it's uh, they don't give it a chance to go okay so what can we do let's let's open things up maybe it's just you know we've lost this thing that we had together and maybe we can re start the fire again if we open this up a little bit or you feel that you're just like screw this i'm just gonna go pound whoever you know because that's what i feel like i want to do and uh, I don't want to fix anything. You, you see what I'm saying? I do. So there are ones that say, okay, they'll go to the table and the partner just shuts them down. Like, nope, too bad, this or nothing. And they're like, okay, well, I'm just going to go and take my chances then. Because mm -hmm. it's either that or nothing. So I'm going to go take my chances with that. And I really try to talk to these. I just, you know, you can only give them information, you know, mm -hmm. that's it. What they do with it is up to them. But I always try to say, listen, I can understand that it's, um, it leaves you feeling completely, you know, unwanted, like depleted and drained and, you know, rejected. But how you behave is still always going to be a reflection of you. So you can, you're, if, here's the thing. If you get caught, you're out anyway. You're right. And right now, you can choose to leave. Mm -hmm. So one, you're out anyway. Just, just know that you're out anyway. Okay. It's all done. It is all done unless you're celibate from here on up. It's all done. So now you have to decide, am I leaving with my character or not? Hmm. Because you have every right to leave. If you're not getting fulfilled in the relationship, you have every right to leave, but to burn it to the ground and destroy your word and who you are, just because makes no sense. It's done anyway. Right. So just go. Mm -hmm. You don't have to behave like that. And like, you're not just gambling on the relationship. You're gambling on who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as you cheat on someone, you're on stolen time. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have now made them a part of a relationship they would never sign on for. That's not okay. Right. Now That's like waging war. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are like, those are the ones that are like, I'm going to have sex at all costs. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Right. But typically they've are also gotten to the point where it's like five years in and it's like, I'm going to explode. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do you get to five years? Where's, here's the problem. There's no communication. And I mean that outside of kids, work, bills, home, they don't, there's no communication. There's none of that. There's no, I want people back at the table going, all right, we've been married for 20 years, 10 years, 15, 20 years. We've had, you know, we've worked, we've traveled, yada, yada, yada. We've all evolved. We've had experiences, you know, mm -hmm. what's changed for you? You know, should we try new things? Should we go new places? Like maybe sex has changed. Like you as a person change as you live and have experiences why wouldn't your wants and desires change? Mm -hmm. And then people are so concerned that 
their partners are going to be offended that their feelings, wants, and desires change. Mm -hmm. That it's like they don't they don't even think that theirs probably did too. Mm -hmm. And like just talking about it is like having all new material to like get to know one another right. and build on that. Right. It, like talking to your partner now is a fear. Is there um in your mind? Is there an end to your story? Is there an end? to to this you know and i ask you this because there is there's a lot of people that are stuck with their own they're set in their ways and for some people this is bad right oh my god i can't believe she's doing it oh i can't believe he's doing it oh i can't believe you know people judge everybody right people judge people but is there is there a time where you're gonna go okay you know what like i've i've had enough of this, or you just you're just going with it, just riding it, or do you have a time? Or do you have in your mind that you know, one well, maybe one day is I'm gonna be completely fulfilled, and this is gonna be it's gonna be it, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna do any of this stuff. You see anything like that for? Have you ever thought 100%. about that? So right now I'm developing a show as well as a massive course outline. Um, mm. Mm. That will be part of my legacy. Truly, my end goal is this. Just engage mm -hmm. in your own life. I'm not here to tell people to have open marriages. I'm not. It's none of my business what type of marriage anybody wants. Have the marriage you want to have with the person you want to have. Just talk to your freaking partner and enjoy your life. That's literally all I want people to do. And if I can develop a way to show them how to do that, that's what I want to give them. You know, and I'm working on all these projects to ensure that I can give everybody all this information and they can just have it when they have it. And I have nothing left to say. I mean, all I really want to do is give it all away and that's all I want. And I will mm -hmm. be grateful for it. Of course, eventually I'm going to walk away, but I still got two books, a show, maybe a documentary. I got the huge road trip to raise awareness. I have all of that still, but yeah, there's definitely going to be linking arms, walking into the sunset, high fiving, and away we go. Mm -hmm. Will it? Will Will you be? Will you stop? But like, will you just be with your husband, or is that something else you ever thought about? Like, or would you would just you just continue to be the same way? Like, just you know how 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 you're doing things now and stuff like that, or when your career is fulfilled and you have everything done. Will you finally settle? Well, that's like saying, or... will you finally be monogamous? No, because I'm not mm -hmm. monogamous. But this is what I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. This is what yeah. I'll tell you. Because I know what you're asking. So I think the best mm -hmm. way I can say it is this, is that we will never, there's, we don't believe that we would ever formally say, that's it. The marriage is now closed. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't formally happen like mm -hmm. that. But I will say this. When his time frees up with mine, we definitely prefer to spend our time together. And mm -hmm. when COVID hit and we were locked in mm -hmm. for years, I knew I picked the right person on my deserted island. I was so <laughs> happy. I was like, yes, yes, yes. So even if we decided to, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like we wouldn't formally do it, but there's a good chance, mm -hmm. you know, like, like if the time comes and that it's like, why wouldn't we just kind of like, and away we go. It just, but it also comes right. down to like, he's still backpacking Cambodia and stuff. And I'm like, uh, do they still have first class available? <laughs> <laughs> so it also depends on traveling, but it's just more of like, a, if it happens, it would just kind of be because it, we just kind of fell into that, but it wouldn't be like some strategic thing of like, that's it. <laughs> Nothing like that. Yeah. Are you, um, how's the jealousy part? Oh, you are, is any, you or him or the, or your other partner or, or his partner or whatever house is jealousy play any part on this? Like once in a while you're like, Oh man. Or is it kind of like, you know, no, it's okay. I, you know, we're grown ups. There shouldn't be. In reality, I don't think there should be any jealousy when you're open 
and you talk to each other and you shouldn't be jealous of the other person. You should be happy for the other person. Right. Otherwise don't do but it. But since we're all different, yeah. um, was there any times when there was any kind of jealousy between, not between all of Dan you? Dan and I. Dan and I never had that. We just, we, we always had such a strong friendship that everything was based off that. So mm. there was never any of that. We also just kind of vibe really well together. We, and we always have, we always have, but there are people that I've dated where it's like, good God, why are your insecurities my fucking job to, um, mm -hmm. to do like, so there are people that I've dated in the past or seen that I'm like, no, like this is, I can't, it's too much like to be responsible for that. Right. And it's like, like they're not, and they're not even jealous of Dan for God's sakes. It's like Twitter. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Like, like right. okay. Like, I don't know what to do. So I'm just like, but that's why, you know, it's funny. Is like for the first time ever, I'm seeing a guy like in my province mm -hmm. and it was funny. Mm -hmm. We were, we were having dinner or whatever. And he was like, Oh, is that Twitter? And I was like, <laughs> you don't have social media. He goes, I don't have any social media. I was like, Oh my God. Yes. That is, uh, it's, it's weird these days yeah. that people would not have any socials. Oh, I mean, it's, I, my son is 25. He doesn't have any socials. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, he goes, it steals my time. I don't want it. That yeah. gentleman, he goes, no, he goes, I've never had it. I don't want it. I don't care about it. Like nothing. And he's an attorney. He's like, I don't need people to find me in other ways. And I was like, this is amazing. But to be honest with mm -hmm. you, like, like at the end of this, that's definitely the first thing I'm dumping. <laughs> right, social media, yeah, absolutely. I love, like I really like doing social media a lot of the time, mm -hmm. but once it catches up on you, it's like, okay, I just need like whew, three days of like detox and like rehab mm -hmm. and like, okay, and then like get back out there. <laughs> yes, you're right about a lot of things. And one of them is you have to have the right person to to go on this journey, especially when you have a family and kids and all that stuff. Because if you don't have the right person, this just gets five times harder trying to accomplish anything that you're trying to accomplish right now, yeah. you know, and just looking at how seeing all the stuff that you, you post and the things that you say, and you know, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that you do posting stuff and oh man, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Like, how do you, what do you do? Do you just, do you drink stuff to power drinks? Or I mean, what, what is it that you, like, how do you do this? Like, how do you not get fully exhausted with all this stuff that's going around you? Well, right now it's like, I know that I, like I have really good people around me that are helping me and things like that, but forever it's just been me. Like it's just, mm -hmm. so I, I don't, I can't stop, but now I kind of have a little bit more of a rhythm, but then it was like, now, you know, five months ago, I added YouTube that takes up so much more time, but I'm absolutely not going to neglect Twitter because I get so much interaction there and so much help from there. And then it's like, you know, I kind of like get around like Instagram and TikTok, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then I have Patreon that I got to create content for, but don't mm -hmm. forget, I'm also building content for a show and I'm building mm -hmm. course, like I'm doing so many things and I, all of part of it is everything has to be built all simultaneously. So I'm like, okay, like this is, uh, this is getting to be a bit much like, <laughs> yes. right. Yes. But the, the bonus is that, you know, I did this like nine, you know, I opened my marriage nine years ago and that, so it's like, it's all me all the time. So it's like, I already have so much content. It's more about, Every now and then I'll be like, oh yeah, I should say that. Or, you know, it's not just right here. It's like, even when I wrote my book, I didn't have a journal or anything. I just wrote from memory. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I see something or remember something, I'll be like, oh yeah, and put that up. But I don't have like something I pull from. Is it exhausting to, and I'm going to ask this for, because you know, it's, I have to ask it because it's common. Is it exhausting to deal with men? Because I feel like a lot of men on Twitter, because I read some of your comments. I like, I read a lot of your comments, not yours, theirs. Does it bother you that they see you like a sex symbol, like a 
Like they don't understand. It's like to me when I first saw you on Twitter, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna follow her just because of this. It's because it's you are tackling on something that a lot of people are not gonna come out and say or do or help other people with. So that to me was very interesting that you open yourself up to to the world, not just to some regular you know chat room. Mm -hmm. You open yourself completely to the world. And that to me was interesting. And I'm like, oh my God, like she has a lot of guts to do something like this, especially now in the, you know, in this time where they can just grab anything that you have and post it up and say all kinds of mean shit. But guys, guys are like relentless. And I can and it's like you're missing the point of what she's trying to do. Like you're going straight for the sex. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're going straight for, oh, well, she's doing it. I want to I want to do her. Yeah. You know, it's like they're missing the point of what you're actually trying to accomplish. But are you, do you, does that get tiring for you? Does, I mean, are you like, oh, my God, and just blocking everybody? I mean, it's just how do you feel when when people think when men think and I'm sure there's women, too. But when men look at you that way. Oh, I in that sort of aspect. It's like one of those things. I'm like, cool. I don't care because. I can't, I can't just stop at every person that's like whistles or like calls me an asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I can't just do that. Right. Cause there's just yes. as many of each. Right. It's, so it's yes. like, it's kind of like, that's a reflection of them. It's like the reply guy or the add on guy. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, look at me, but it's like, they don't really want to yes. add anything. They just want to mm -hmm. be like, that's it. So yes. for me, it's like, I can't get caught up in that. It's like, Mm -hmm. Just, you know, and at the same time, you know, their numbers add to my platform that elevates the, oh, I mean, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? But I put myself out there. How people receive me is up to them. They can read my book. They can go on my YouTube channel. They can read my blogs. They can do all those things. But not everybody shows up to learn. Not everybody's mm -hmm. there because they want to know about my life. Some people snag mm -hmm. my pictures. Some people just want to snap into my DMs. They want other mm -hmm. information. But there are a lot of people there that are there to learn, that do want to know about me, that, and not just how I open my marriage. I get a lot of questions on like, hey, how did you get from A to B with confidence? Like, how did you do this part? Like, what about this? What about parenting? Like, there's a lot of other things that people want to know, even how I publish my book. So mm -hmm. I put myself out there in a lot of ways. And I know that, you know, for every three that say, or for every 10 that say yes, I'm going to get like one that's like, you're nuts. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Like whatever, because here's the thing. I already have bells and whistles. I already live my life. I do what I want. I'm not here because I need more bells and whistles. I already have bells and whistles. I can shut it all down and my life doesn't change mm -hmm. at all. But I know that what I can offer changes a lot of other people's lives and that's why I'm here. And those people aren't necessarily vocal on my front page. But let me tell you, my messages, DMs, my emails, my underground following is massive. Like when you look at my following across all my platforms, think of it like an iceberg. What you see is nothing compared to what I have. And it has become so apparent across all my platforms, especially when I turn on my like Anon, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know the reason I haven't pulled everything and walked away mm -hmm. is because there is a need, is because mm -hmm. it is being taken, is because it is being used. It is evolving. Mm -hmm. There is a need for it. And at the end of the day, like I said, I don't want people, I'm not here to be like, Here's the best way to open your marriage. No, I don't care what you do with your marriage. Do, but just make sure that you're engaged in it and that it's producing happiness, maintaining it, and you're both getting what you want from it. Otherwise, what's the point of it? Mm -hmm. And then the, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely, you're, and I, a lot of people miss that. Yeah. They kind of just, they completely miss the whole message. You know what I mean, Yep. The one important, super important question I wanted to ask you, and you touched on it, parenting. How you have children, mm -hmm. it's 
is this has this been hard because i i know how you know now these days you know some people are just they're assholes mm -hmm. you know do they do your kids get shit for you know for because you have an open relationship open marriage all that stuff is it hard i, I know in the book you talked a little bit about you know why it's important to talk to them but is you giving advice to the listeners how how can you slowly integrate what you're trying the message you're trying to give your children so they don't look at it as like what the hell you know so they don't freak out so they don't they're like what the heck's going on here why would you do that to my dad why would you do that to my mom why would you do that to us or how were you able to tackle on that huge, huge task as having children and explaining that to them? Okay. So I did. Okay. I have a video of this, but let me tell you right here. Um, there's a, there's a formula. I made a formula. Okay. Ah. So here I have a, well now he's 25 and I have a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I told the 25 year old, we told the 25 year old eight years ago he was an mm -hmm. adult. It's like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. keep this from you. Right. This is me and Dan stood there. We're like, this is what it is. Yada, yada, yada. He goes, okay. He goes, I wouldn't choose to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm monogamous. Like I wouldn't choose to do this. He goes, but I'm so happy that like, this is how it is. Then like nobody mm -hmm. can come and rip our family apart. I don't care. Thanks so much. Whatever. Doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, my daughter, she was like, we were at home during home lessons for COVID or whatever, sex ed. And it was like open marriages. She's like, do you know that some people have open marriages? And I was like, all right, well, now's a good time. Here's my on ramp. <laughs> so I don't lie. To, I don't. Sh I talk to my children. Not, you know what I mean? It's like she asked or she brought it up. I'm telling her now. Cause if she, mm -hmm. what am I going to tell her in two years that you already said it? And I dodged it. I'm not here to dodge it. Mm -hmm. So I brought down my book and I said, what do you think I write about? She goes, I don't know. And I said, well, we opened our marriage a couple of years ago and um, we each have a single side where we can do whatever we want. She goes, so do you date other people? And I said, yes. And she goes, does dad? And I said, yes. And she goes, will you always be my mom? And I said, I will always be your mom. And she goes, will he always be my dad? I said, he will always be your dad. She goes, okay. Hmm. Like kids are resilient. Like if you talk to them, if you tell them the truth, mm -hmm. They will accept it. But here's what you need to do. You need to be confident in your truth. And here's another thing. There's a difference between giving them information and giving them details. Nobody mm -hmm. needs details about your marriage. But some mm -hmm. people might need information about it because you don't mm -hmm. want them hurt. Like my adult son, I don't date. I didn't at the time date here. But my husband did. Imagine him seeing him out. But I'm like, let's not tell my son. All of a sudden, he's watching this. That's not okay. Right. No. If you're going to do this. Be confident in it. Like, I'm here to normalize this in my life, not to hide, not to be, not to be, I don't need to be private like that. I'm private in details, not in information. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. If now, has anyone said anything to my son? I actually don't know. He's never said anything, but I can't imagine him caring much. Mm -hmm. My daughter now, different story, mm -hmm. young girl, goes to school you know, mm -hmm. at a, at a big school and things like that at this point in time, nothing. But I mean, what I can tell you is that, um, I definitely raise my children to not give the same weight to all opinions and, um, and to not live your life based on what other people think or care or whatever, that this all comes down to you. This affects you. This is all you. So mm -hmm. that's something that I'm ready to feel if and when it comes, but we don't hide just because somebody might be uncomfortable or have angry words. Mm -hmm. And if you're not confident in this, in your choices, in your marriage, mm -hmm. it's going to show. And if you're mm -hmm. not confident in it, how can they? And then if kids aren't confident in it, now we have a fear. Now we're scared because mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like you want to do this. So why? And now my home life feels on shaky ground. Mm -hmm. So don't bring the kids in unless you are absolutely sure and confident that this is what you want to do. 
because Mm -hmm. there's no point in adding that when it's unnecessary. It's just, it's pointless. It's, it's unnecessary. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time you have to make a choice. Like, are you doing this for fun? Or is this, is this you? Like, are you Mm non-monogamous? What is it? Now, if you're just like, monogamish Mm -hmm. okay you probably don't need to tell your children about that Mm -hmm. but that's not the case here and my children have every right to know some of the information Mm -hmm. because i can't control other people and if i have somebody standing on my stairs screaming in well okay like nobody and nobody in my house is in trouble but that doesn't change this person who's emotionally upset on my, you know, front step yelling in and Mm -hmm. that's going to affect them. Now, if they don't have that information and I haven't told them and I'm standing there trying to tell them, well, fending off this person, that's going to be, there's no need for that. I can information over details and just be confident in it. There's not, you're not doing anything wrong. If you and your partner are rowing the same boat, row the boat. Yes. It's your marriage. It's up to you to be happy in it. And it is absolutely your responsibility to provide your own happiness. Other people can't do that. So just mm-hmm. work together, create the custom marriage you want, monogamy, non monogamy I don't care. Who cares? As long as it's what both of you want and you're both thriving in it, that's all your marriage needs. Yes. Super important message because I, I feel a lot of people, some people that you read their comments and stuff like this. This is an important part that a lot of people are not willing to open up. But I feel like this, this, this kind of relationship is you have to be completely open with everybody, kids, everybody. If it's not, if not, it's not going to work. Right. And I feel like a lot of people don't want to do it. They don't want to like, okay, I'm going to do this. And because I feel like I still, you know, I'm looking for something or, or whatever the reason is. Because they have children. I feel like they stop themselves and then they live miserable forever. Yep. Because they're like, oh, man, uh, I couldn't do it because I have children. And what are my kids going to think of me? What? But if you explain, like you're saying, if you explain to them, if you're if you're open about it, if you're like, look, this is what's going on at the right time. You're obviously not going to tell a two-year-old, you know. Right. But at, at the right time, you know, this is, this is what's going on. I feel like it does work how not for everybody, right? It has to be. It has to work for everybody. But if you just kind of go on doing this until they're in their thirties and they have no clue and all of a sudden you're like, you get busted. Like you said, Oh, like, why is dad over there dating somebody? You know, it's bad. So I feel like you have to be completely open from the moment that it's time for them to know what's going on. And also, you know, for those people that are, that are, that are going to be listening to this, that are maybe like, Hey, you know, I, I've, I always want to do this, but my kids stop me or, or whatever it is. You know, there's, there's all kinds of, different things that how are my kids going to judge me what are you know what are are they going to say about me if i'm a good dad or i'm a good mom or whatever and what you just said is super important is you know telling your kids telling your kids when it's the right time to tell them and explaining to them not by telling them what you do but explaining to them why is like look this is what's going on and you know and i think that's healthy and communication is not what people have these days Communication is what I think lacks of people. They don't. What? Oh yeah. It it seems like we've lost communication a little bit, and I feel like that's why you know the marriage rate is is bonkers. It's crazy. Like nobody, you know, people are just divorcing left and right because there's no communication, it, like zero. They you know they just want to communicate having sex, and it's like well you need to communicate in different and other ways. You need to be able to tell your spouse, your partner, your friends, your family. You need to be able to communicate. And I think that a lot of people have lost that communication where you can actually explain yourself of what you're trying to do or how you feel or so they can know what you're going through and what what you, what you feel inside. Well, I think one thing, too, is let's stop tying our marital bedroom to our parental fitness. Mm -hmm. My relationship with my husband is separate than my relationship with my children. Mm -hmm. 
So I can have an open marriage where I have a husband and a boyfriend. And guess what? I still drive carpool. I still show up to all the functions and I still do all that stuff because it still matters to me. It's a big part of my life and I love doing it. Mm -hmm. So when people are like, well, you know, what does that do to the children? And, you know, they want this and that. Does it change how I am as a parent? Now, if, if that does change, there you go. But you can have it all and do it all and enjoy it all and be happy in it when you find the balance, if you want to be committed to that. Mm -hmm. And having an open marriage when you have children does not make you a bad parent mm -hmm. at all. It has nothing to do with it. Your marriage has nothing to do with it. Like, how is that a thing? Mm -hmm. And let's be clear. Let's be clear. There's a lot of fake monogamous marriages, a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have so much research. It's crazy. I mean, I've been doing this for nine years, online dating and DMs and whatever. There's a plethora, thousands upon thousands of people in marriages that one person's open and the other person is completely blindsided as soon as that comes out. Mm. How is that? How is that? not tied to parental fitness, right? Right. If we're going to tie one of these behaviors, one of these marriages, it's that one. Mm -hmm. It's that one. Cause you're going out of your way. You are aware and you're going out of your way to blow up the familial home. And I'm doing everything I can to avoid that. Mm -hmm. We are not the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a little loop and I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, cause I think it's important that uh, because some people are going to wonder, how was it growing up for you? Just had a normal growing up, uh, mom, dad, uh, normal siblings or whatever, you know, or it's just a normal thing for you. Was it a little different? Was it, uh, were you more quiet? Were you more, um, you know, just to your kept stuff to yourself while you were growing up? Or, I mean, did you always have this uh, in the back of your mind? As, as you were growing up, like, you know, this is something that I want to experience or was it something that you just picked up along the way that, you know, I don't feel like I, I, this is not completing me just yet. I, I need to, you know, this is what I want to do. Later in my later, well, growing up, like I was the youngest of eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like they didn't, you know, like, yeah, I come, I come from a really large family, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, we were latchkey kids and, um, like, do I want to go back to my childhood? Hell no. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, you know, um, <clears throat> but I like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it was pretty standard for where mm -hmm. I came from, come from a large family just, but I was never an introvert. I was mm -hmm. always an extrovert. Okay. Um, I was always a traveler. I love to travel all over. When I was 17, I started to go overseas, like to Asia and things like that mm. on my own. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I, but I was also the one to break away. Mm -hmm. Like it was really important to me to um, not, I was happy to take my Irish heritage, but nothing else. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take anything from my family. I didn't want to take, I wanted to build my own. I wanted to have my own beliefs. I wanted to do all that because I knew growing up, that not everything aligned with me. And I knew that I was, what I wanted was different. Mm -hmm. So even in all that, it was like being the youngest of eight. Mm -hmm. And like, I was the big extrovert. I was the loud one. Always. I was the fastest, all of that. So. And I asked you this because people think that you have to grow up jacked up to, because remember, you have to remember something a lot. Like I said earlier, a lot of people think this is wild. Oh my God, I can't believe she's doing this. And people think for and not just your stuff, but there's different kinds of things that you could do that people think you're wild, right? Or, or they think I'm wild or whatever, but they think right automatically that, well, he must've had a shitty childhood or she must've had a shitty childhood. You know, like the right away, they, they judge you and they don't understand that you don't necessarily have to have a shitty childhood. That doesn't apply. It's just something that, was not meant that was meant for you this is something that you you know you were outgoing you're all this stuff you're just different not it doesn't you don't have to have a shitty life 
to right. to do anything like this. And you don't, you know, oh, oh, she must be doing this because she had a, she had a shitty life. No, it doesn't apply like but that. It doesn't work that way. People do that because they need to be able to like rationalize it in their head. But these people are not happy. It's like when somebody, I always say this. So if you need other people's lives and marriages or relationships to look exactly like yours, so you're comfortable in yours, I got some seriously bad news for you. And it is going to be bad, (laughs) right? It's so unnecessary to, to need to, to want to do that. But the desire to do that is absolutely an insecurity within them. It has nothing to do with me, nothing at all, because my marriage hurts no one. Here's the thing. My first marriage, I had affairs and then I left, Mm -hmm. I left and that's it. And I knew I was never going to be that person again. I never wanted to be somebody that hurt somebody who genuinely just cared for me. I never wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. So I had to come to the terms. I had to come to terms with the fact that I could be committed forever, Mm -hmm. but probably not monogamous. Mm -hmm. Seven years into the marriage, we opened the marriage, but he knew that before we were even engaged that I probably would not be able to be monogamous. He said, most people are like that, but never say anything. Mm -hmm. And it was only like three months ago that he opened up to me that he's actually never been monogamous ever. Like, I remember like a year and a half ago when he disclosed that he'd actually never even been through heartbreak. And I was like, wait, does that mean you're still dating everyone? (laughs) Or like, (laughs) how have you never been through heartbreak? And we've been married for like, at that point, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Just no, because he's never been monogamous. So he never had any of that stuff. I think also like men, you know, they're a little bit different. Women, yeah. sometimes we're more like reserved, like we don't, you know what I mean? We don't pay attention to all the details, you know, they're yeah. just, they're just, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? We're different yeah. sometimes <laughs> when it comes to that kinds of stuff. Um, I want to ask you one last question, and this is, you know, a little bit different, but what is the happiest, what has been the happiest moment in your life? You've probably had a lot of them, but, you know, yeah. like the super, like, This is up to right now, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it's a place you've been or something you've accomplished. What has gotten you to that place where you're like, this is one of the most happiest moments of my life? When we went into COVID, Mm -hmm. um, my son was back at home because he was going to university. So he was back at home. And um, my daughter was young. Obviously, she's there. Um, And... I remember saying to Dan, Hey, we don't know how long we're going to be in this for. Let's see what we can do in terms of like reigniting that passion and stuff. Cause even though we're still intimate Mm -hmm. and sexual, it wasn't like that initial. I was like, you know, every now and then it's like, maybe we should try. Mm -hmm. And I remember making the commitment, him and I making the commitment. And I, it was like, not long after it was like within two weeks, we had found a way to crack through into the honeymoon Mm -hmm. phase. And I remember thinking that we had unlocked this ridiculous level, like that, holy cow, you can, you can actually do this. And I remember thinking we had unlocked that level. And as soon as that I became aware of that, I felt unstoppable because I knew that as long as we could do that, there was a good chance we would always be in the same boat, rowing the same boat. And if he's always in my same boat, I can't lose. Mm -hmm. And it was like knowing you had it all because I knew at the beginning of COVID, I was super happy with who I chose to be on my deserted Mm -hmm. island. And the fact that we could keep reigniting it was exceptional. It was like, it was like having, knowing I built what to me and to him, like when we talked about was the perfect partnership Mm -hmm. and that it felt like the, one of the biggest wins in life because 
Dan, my partner, my co-pilot, my, the person who's like been like, whatever you want to do, do like, I got you. I don't take anything personally. Like this is your life. Make a run for it is like all in again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's no feeling like that. It's, I don't believe in soulmates. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I think it's like real toxic relationship, yada, yada, yada. But if I did, I mean, I don't have a better argument for one. I, I'll tell you that. Well, you have to row together. You know, like I said, if you're on the same boat, you have to row together. Or if you're yeah. rowing one way and the other person's rowing the other way, you're going to go in a circle. It's just part of yeah. how it works. But another thing that's always been great, really amazing about Dan is Dan has never, ever, ever forgot that he is only the co-pilot in my life. He has never tried to overtake that. He has never tried to close the doors for me. He has always allowed me the space and time to figure it out. And I don't think people necessarily understand that when you are committing to a lifelong partnership, marriage, or whatever you want to call it, that your partner matters, not just in the now, but in the forever. And when we we're standing there in COVID and we were able to bring it all around and our deserted island was the best place on the planet. Mm -hmm. Everything else just seemed like sprinkles, like almost like I'd cracked this incredible code mm -hmm. to life and love. And that I remember like, was just like, wow. Wow. That's very interesting. I, I can tell that you guys have a wonderful partnership marriage and you know like it, it works it works you know there's some people that just can't go all the way they kind of go halfway and then it falls apart and yeah. you guys are completely open and open with each other and any in all the aspects i'm sure uh, how you feel the feelings i'm sure you talk about you know like you said on your book yep. you guys talk about stuff you know and it's not just you know hey how you doing all right whatever it's like uh, you, it's just it's, it's, a, it's a normal thing you know it's you're, you're married, you're together, you're, you're spending time, you talk about things of what's bothering you, what's wrong with you. Like that's super, super important. And, you know, I'm going to give you a, uh, I'm going to give you whatever time you need to, like, do you have any projects or anything that you want to share or, you know, I'm going to let you plug in all your social media and where they can find you and all this stuff. Okay. So I have a YouTube channel that I'm constantly on. Um, and I have a plethora of videos of, you know, questions people ask of like, you know, why I opened my marriage, parting ways with monogamy. You know, um, there's a video on there with Dan and I uh, talking about jealousy and that. And you can just get to my YouTube channel through my name, Natalie Warner, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, no H. Um, I have a book. It's called Crazy on the Inside, A Memoir of Nobody Special. Uh, that's available on Amazon, and there's the audio there as well. And that book discusses um, my journey of opening my marriage and living a part-time single life in New York City for one week a month. Um, Twitter. You can always reach me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at open and married. And on my Twitter is my link for my book, my YouTube channel, my link tree, pretty much anything you need, you can find there. So I want to thank you for, for joining me today. It's, it was, it was an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me and I'm happy to come back in. Thank you. Now everybody go check her out. All the information is going to be uh, on the, on the webpage on the episode uh, description. So go check her out, check out her book. It's great. It's on, I think it's on Amazon. I, I, I read it on Amazon. What is it? Um, what is that thing? Amazon books audible. or what the heck is it? That audio audible. It was an audible. Yeah, so go audible. check her out till next time. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.